everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dancefish.com, and today we're gonna do a tour of all live bears. We're gonna have some wild type live bears, we're gonna have some really fancy domestic strains, some common stuff, and I bet we've got a couple things you've never seen before. Anyway, let's go take a look at live bears. Okay, first of all, I wanna show you these. This is a new one, never seen this one before. I have seen the albino hyphen pineapple veil tail sword tails before, but never these. This is a new color pattern of the same fin variety. This is the albino orange veil tail sword tails. Look how gorgeous these ladies are. Man, they are stunning. Oh, look at that. Now only the females develop that really long veil tail. Oh, but man, these are gorgeous fish. Anyway, this is my first time ever seeing these. So of course I had to bring them in and try them. And they look like I thought they would. They look just like the pineapple variety, but in an orange color. And I'm really pleased with them. These are the uh, Kohaku hyphen sore tails in the albino form. Look at the nice finish on these. This nice high dorsal fins. Clear color de delineation between the uh, red and the white. Basically a koi. If a sword tail was a koi, this is what it would look like. This strain has been worked. Like you can tell the consistency is pretty nice on these in body shape and the, the nice contrast on the oranges and the whites. Someone took a lot of time to develop these guys. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to like and subscribe, we're trying to grow this channel to 30,000 subs. Let's get there. Your help would be most appreciated. Here is a platy I've never seen. This is the blue hyphen platy. Now these, I think, are a fairly new strain because there's quite a bit of variation in them. They all, uh, all the males have really nice hyphens, but the color variation is distinct. So we'll have some that are pretty much all blue or blue with some red on them. And then we've got some in here that have the blue body as you would expect, but also quite a bit of yellow. There's even a wag female right there. So quite a bit of variation on the color, but the body shape and the finish has been worked really carefully on these. So they all have blue on the body, blue iridescence on the body, but some of them have some other colors thrown in there as well. In fact, my favorite is this guy in the back. Let's see if he'll come out. He's got, here he comes, this guy right here. It's kind of in the back there, but he's got a lot of reds and yellows on his fin. There he goes. Now you can see him. See that? Like that beautiful blue iridescent body, but with some reds and yellows on the fin. Now, I don't know if that's something that is desirable in a blue strain to have reds and yellows but i sure think he's pretty <laughs> whether that's whether that's like what you want in a blue strain or not i think that fish is amazing he's my favorite of all of them then down here we have our hyphen sunrise platies we've had these before and i just think they're fantastic like this is an amazing fish that kind of orange that blends into the yellow on the back half of the fish and that nice high dorsal fin. Um, hard to go wrong with these. For those that don't know, we are now an affiliate of the Aquarium Co-op. So if you look down in the description, you'll see a link that you can click on. And if you click that link and buy something from aquariumcoop.com, we'll get a little piece of the action and that helps us keep our company going. So that'd be most appreciated. Thank you. Here we have our Berlin Liar Tails. And what I'd like to call your attention to is first of all, the body size. These are a nice robust body. These aren't these long, flimsy, super scrawny bodies of the really early developing males. I can tell this line has been bred from the nice robust late developing males. And look at the consistency um, of the Liar Tail. It's not, it's got nice extensions on the top and the bottom. So there's all kinds of liar tail, sword tails in the hobby, um, but these are definitely on the higher end. Here we have some Sanke high fin sword tails. 
I think these are absolutely stunning. I love the contrast with those black specks. I love the contrast of that with the nice kind of Kohaku um, themed body with the yellow and the orange. So basically they've taken a Sanke Koi and said, what would that look like in a sword tail? And this is what it looks like. Look at the, the dorsal fin, like on that male there. On the females, it's not always as high, although it's generally extended. But on, on some of these males, like that guy in the back facing away from us, or this guy that's facing us, look at that. That top fin is just exquisite. So another line that has been worked with tender, loving care is just evident in the body size and uh, the consistency. It's a really nice line. Saffron mollies. And look at that nice big boy there with that nice big fin. So these are the sail fin saffron mollies. Really neat. My first time having these. This is the first batch I've ever had. As you would expect, they're breeding all the time. At first, I thought I had all females because when they came in, they were good sized, but they all looked female. Gradually, though, over time, some males developed out and have developed some nice, are starting to develop at least. One of them has it. The others are starting to develop to develop a nice, large sail fin. So it took some doing. They had to get to a pretty good size before they sexed out, but it's worth it. Nice, bright fish, nice, bright um, saffron with a nice, big sor uh, sword pff, with a nice, big sail fin on it. I'm going to have to edit that clip like crazy, man. Okay, in my defense, it's been the end of a very long day, and I didn't get a day off this weekend. We had to replumb a big part of our, our water treatment system, and that six-inch PVC pipe. I don't know if you've ever worked with six-inch PVC pipe, but it's not very forgiving. So it was a long weekend. I'm gonna, I have trouble talking on camera, period. It's gonna be even worse today. But thankfully, the fish I'm gonna show you are really cool. So <laughs> hopefully that will be worth the pain of trying to listen to me talk when I'm this tired. Here's another tank of the Sunrise Hyphen Platys. Um, I basically brought the breeder out. And then I think we have one more tank. Yes, here's the, another tank of them. So the breeder had some, I was like, I'll take them all. I just think this fish is absolutely amazing. So anytime I can get them, I do. Because I can't always get them. So when the opportunity is there, I tend to, tend to try to buy them out. Here are some golden tuxedo sword tails. This is a, a fairly common and inexpensive sword tail, but still, don't let common fool you into thinking that they're not beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. I love the orange red of the dorsal fin on a lot of the males. Um, the nice black and gold contrast. I think these are really nice fish. And for the price, they're extra nice. Okay, these are the solid yellow hyphen platys. I think very oddest platys, if I remember correctly. I'd have to look again. Just something you don't see very often is the solid yellow variety. Uh, sent some of these to Corey at Aquarium Co-op. He bought some, so uh, there's a members only unboxing. So if you're a member of his channel, you can, uh, you can actually see that unboxing video. And if you're not a member, the co-op does some amazing stuff. They have guest speakers that give lectures. Uh, it's just like going to a fish club, but you can watch it online. It's the same speakers that would often go out on tour and talk at different fish clubs, experts in different areas of the fish keeping hobby. And uh, you can, for five bucks a month at the Aquarium Co-op, you can, you can get a couple of those a month, I think is what they're doing. Maybe it's one a month, but there's a whole bunch there. So it's totally worth it in my opinion. Down here we have our group of white tuxedo guppies. These were bred and raised in Europe. The quality of these is really high. The strain is very consistent. And I think they're great. That nice black body with vibrant white um, contrasting against that black tuxedo. Okay, these guys have a ton of plant cover, so they might be a little difficult to see. These are our Berlin sword tails. Hopefully they'll come out. Let's see if I can scare them out a little bit into the light. There we go. Nice red orange sword tail with some great contrast on the body. In a bajillion babies, these things are breeding like crazy for us. These are the blue metal dragon guppies. So there we go. I'm trying to get them out from under the plant so that we can see them better. We all know the red dragon. There's a blue dragon as well. And there's even a green dragon. I don't have the green dragons right now, but I have had them. 
I think each one is prettier than the last. Okay, these are the red wag rose fin or cauliflower fin sword tails. These are some of the more expensive ones. All the kind of rose fin, cauliflower fin types are, are pricey, but uh, they're also really stunning. And they breed like crazy. We bred several of these strains. They breed really well. So I think if you want to like do a breeding for profit thing, it's the same amount of food and work and stuff to maintain these really expensive high quality live bears as it is your standard mutt guppies or whatever. So why not do the high quality ones and uh, raise those up and I think you'll get a better return for your investment. I think it makes economic sense and even if it doesn't, it sure makes beauty sense like the aesthetics on these guys. These are just gorgeous. These are our Kohaku hyphen liar tail sword tails. Um, these I would call a mid-grade. I think these are selling for like 15 to 20 dollars so they're not like the 200 dollar ones. They're still very beautiful though. So if you like high fins and liar tails in Kohaku and you don't want to break the bank with some of the you know more expensive high fin koi types like I've shown you earlier in the video then this might be a good option. Okay, here are the high fin pineapple sword tails. A lot of you have seen the, uh, the albino pineapple sword tails that we had before. These are just as pretty. They're just not albinos. You can tell by looking at the eyeballs. The eyes are black on these. The albinos look pretty much the same except for the eyes are red, uh, pinkish red. Here's a very high quality strain of albino red liar tail sword tails. These were bred and raised in Europe. And you can generally tell when something's bred and raised in Europe just by the size of the body and the consistency of the strain. Now, that being said, I do have some good breeders in other parts of the world too, but most of the stuff from Europe comes in really consistent. This is the red cauliflower hyphen sword tails. These are younger, but you can already see the good body size coming in and you can see the nice finish developing. Oh, I just think they're so pretty. Okay, here's one of our colonies of Limia vitata, a nice wild type live bear that you don't see around very often. And uh, let me go show you another colony of these that we have. Here's the second colony of these that we have. I like these. I think the, the black mottled kind of contrast on the, on the light colored body is nice and they do develop some nice yellows and oranges. I, I don't know if it's coming through on camera. And they aren't as fired up today as they were yesterday, but some nice color on these guys. I think they're pretty neat. They're hard to see against the black background, um, and they aren't really going down against the sand very well. There's one. These are black Moscow guppies. Oop, just went back up. Okay, this is the Limia Isla. There's a whole bunch of babies in there, as you can see. I'm gonna try to get the adults out from under the plants so you can see them in the light there. There they are. A nice banded limia that you really don't see often or ever. Okay, here's one we're working on. I showed these before, so I kind of want to show the progress. This is the uh, Zephophorus variatus from Rio uh, Coaquilco. They're a very neat fish. Like you can see there's a couple males up there, but they came in skinny, and as you can see. So we're trying to get some weight on them. We're putting them through some different medications to try to figure out exactly what's going on. They seem to be doing better. So I think it's now just a matter of time to fatten them up, uh, you know, after treatment and stuff. But I think they came in with parasites. Uh, they're obviously skinnier than you would expect. But uh, check that guy out there. Kind of get an idea of what they'll look like once they actually feel really good and, and settle in. They'll get some nice reds and they'll get that nice black on the body. These are red-eyed red hyphen cauliflower or rose fin, however you want to call it, sword tails. Okay, down here is another wild type limia. This is the humpback limia. This is the first limia I ever kept in bread. So, you know, I've got a, a, I've got a soft spot in my heart for them. Limia nigra fasciata. And uh, this batch has been rock solid. They're fat, they're sassy, they're breeding, they're doing great. So if you like Limia, Nigra Fasciata, this is a good group. These are our albino platinum guppies. 
see him up there at the top doing what guppies do, which is, you know, always trying to breed. Like always. That's just what they do. Okay, here's another wild type live bear. This is a molly. This is Poecilia salvatoris, the Liberty Molly. And they're doing really well. They've gained a lot of weight since we brought them in. So the, the males are developing some nice reds that contrast with that uh, black spot on the dorsal fin, which I think is a really nice contrast. Of all the wild type mollies, this might be my favorite. I like the reds on them and the constant activity. This is a super active fish. So next to the uh, Liberty Molly, we have a domestic strain. This is the orange red. I think we call them orange red sailfin molly. Um, they sell them to us as blood reds, but I don't think that's fair. I think there's a lot more gold in there than there is red. So we call them orange red just to not be misleading. They are different than your standard gold. And like this male here, that guy's really kind of like a blood red. So that, that makes sense. So they're basically like a gold sailfin that has a little more orange on it, but they're doing hard, they're doing well. They've been really hardy for us. So nice and healthy. Okay, here's another wild type molly. This is the Pacific molly, Pocilia butleri. This is one that I had never seen before. Now this group has fattened up quite a bit since we got them. There's a st still a few in there that are recovering. Uh, again, I think they came in with parasites, but most of them are doing well. And look at this male right here. He's kind of darkening in. He's getting his nice yellow orange band on his tail fin. And it's hard to see against the black background, but he has a nice black color on his dorsal fin. So interesting wild type molly that you just never see. Here's another tank of the uh, Sunset Variatus hyphen platy. I just like them. So when they're available, I go hard. <laughs> okay, here's another wild type platy. This is the Phophorus maculatus. These are the, the purple bay leaves. So it's a wild strain, almost never available. Pretty darn expensive, but I think there's a lot of possibilities using this fish to either just line breed here and keep them wild and true or to cross over to some of the domesticated maculatus platys and get some neat color variations. Trout gadaids! This is a favorite for a lot of people. It gets nice and big and chunky. It's hardy and it's beautiful. The trout gadaid. Iliadon fursidens is a scientific name. These were aquarium bred and raised here in the United States by a hobbyist. We do love buying fish from hobbyists. So if you're a hobbyist breeder and you have bred some fish and you have them in decent numbers, hit us up, hello at dancefish.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at dancefish.com. And uh, if you have a nice batch, we might be able to buy them from you. We pay 25% of the retail price landed. So our landed costs, we need to be able to mark up four times uh, to make our business work. So if you're wondering what you would get paid, it's 25% of the retail cost once the fish is landed. Here is another wild type platy. This is a Phosphorus variatus from Rio Coaquilo. I'm going to say that again. From Rio Coaquilco. Coaquilco. Yeah, I think that's right. This is another one that uh, came in pretty skinny and we've been fattening up and a lot of good progress. They've gained a lot of weight. I think we've probably got the parasites out of them now. And so now it's just a waiting game for them to gain some weight. Something about these wild type variatus platys, they need to really mature before their color and finage and everything comes into play. These are juveniles right now. So kind of like rainbow fish, they're not gonna look like much for a little while, but when they mature and color out or get their finage and stuff, they're gonna be pretty neat fish. Okay, so we're about halfway done. Um, I think that's a good mix of common live bearers versus some wild types that are pretty rare and some really fancy domestic strains you just don't see every day. But we've got more to go, so fill your beverage, grab a snack, let's show you some stuff. Here's a nice group of coral wag platys, a common but very beautiful platy. These were sourced from a, a hobbyist breeder here in the United States, so that's about as humane as it gets. If the fish don't have to travel overseas in crowded conditions and stuff in the import process, that's awesome. If you can buy them just directly from the breeder, that's the best way to source fish. And if they're a hobbyist, then, you know, they've baby, baby them. Like, you know, for, for us hobbyists, we don't see fish as like a commodity. We see them as pets. So hobbyists tend to take really good care of their fish. So this group is doing fantastic.
fat and sassy and breeding all the time. You can see all the different sizes in there, anything from newborn babies on up to adults. This is our group of stake endlers. A couple years ago now, I think, we, we bought a few from Alexander Englehart. We put them in a bear tank because we weren't planning on breeding them. Um, and we were gonna sell them and when we were done selling them, we were gonna buy more from Alexander. However, even in that bear tank, they bred and they did not eat their babies. They just kept reproducing and kept reproducing. So to date, we have not had to reorder any from Alexander Englehart because the colony is so prolific. This is a rare endler. It's quite desirable. And the reason is, is it's a wild strain endler. Most endlers are no longer purebred. They've been hybridized with guppies. Um, and a lot of them have been hybridized with different locations of endlers. This is a pure strain endler. It was never hybridized. And this is from a single location and that line has been kept pure. So that's why the stake endler can be more expensive than a lot of your, you know, standard endlers or guppies. Here is another group of Sanke high fin sword tails. Look at these. Hopefully they're showing the, the nice finish, the good body shape. I think these are just, I, I love all the dark speckling on the song case. I just think it's a really nice color combination. This is a video about live bears, but for everyone that's been waiting, you know what that is, right? That's right. We got some Corridors Equus. These were bred and raised in Germany. So we're able to get some aquarium bred and raised Corridors Equus. More on that later when they're out of quarantine. Okay, metal yellow mosaic guppies. I'll let the fish do the talking. These are so bright. That yellow contrasting with that black. I mean, even the females are just stunning. Okay, these absolutely stunning jewels are the full gold guppies. And they're on top of some CW14 red lasers. Look how bright these guppies are. They're breeding like crazy, they're doing really well. There's one or two kind of runty skinny ones, but in general, this batch has been nice and solid. Those quarries aren't shabby looking either. Albino koi guppies. I mean, these are just bright as the sun. They glow from across the room. Uh, these came from a source in Israel, bred and raised in Israel, and they've been doing great for us, fat and sassy and looking good. Next to them, we have some albino platinum liar tail mollies, another really bright, shiny fish. Really nice group of these, really nice batch. And uh, that takes me to our breeders. This is our, our breeding colony of the normal platinum sailfin mollies. So that group I showed you before was the albino. These are the platinums. And I think they look just as pretty. And I know I've showed them before, but this is our main breeding male, our main stud. And uh, whew, this guy is a looker. Speaking of mollies, here's one you don't see every day. This is the dark calico molly. And I don't know how well they're gonna show on camera, but this is one that when people see them in person, you kind of get the gasp and a little bit of drool coming off the corner of their mouth. I mean, this is just a very beautiful, interesting, I've never seen it before kind of fish. Really a, a ton of calico spotting over a white to copper background, depending on which fish you get. So dark calico, not cheap, but really interesting and, and very unique fish. Here's a green sailfin molly. These are not your average green sailfin. These are a specialty strain. You can kind of see the copper color on that male right there. They have a lot of iridescence on them. So they're not a wild sailfin. They took the wild sailfin, worked the line, probably crossed it with some other stuff and got this kind of neat iridescent green sail. Here are more of the Kuhaku high fin liar tail sword tails. Again, really pretty fish, 15 to 20 bucks each, um, which is nice because some of those other strains of sword tails, the, the fancy Kuhaku high fins and stuff, uh, those are gonna be over hundred bucks each. I can't remember exactly the price, but pretty pricey. 
Here's one I love. This is the Blue Ivory Guppy. And I just love the contrast, that glowing blue ivory with the really dark blues and blacks. I think it's a stunning fish. We have two of these left. These are the copper mollies. We do have babies, so we'll be raising up some more, I think. Just a very unique fish, something I had never seen before. And another one that when people come in and see, they kind of stop at and are like, what is that? And I think you think of mollies, you think kind of ho-hum, but these are, these are not ho-hum. These are something special. All right, albino yellow cobra guppies. Nice breeding colony, tons of babies. The key with breeding the albinos I found is just tons of plants because they do eat their babies readily. So lots and lots and lots and lots of plants. Um, I in fact had to, usually this whole top of the water here is actually choked with plants. Um, I, had to, I had to kind of push it all to the side in a bunch so I could get enough light down so you could see these on video. But usually it's just completely choked with plants, at least the top half of the water column. That's the key. One last group <laughs> of hyphen sunrise variatus platys. We go through these so fast, so I can't get enough of them. So anytime the breeder has any available, uh, I'm like, I'll, I'll take all of them. This is our breeding colony of um, hyphen red sword tails, red orange sword tails. Some of them have hyphen, some don't. That's because uh, when you breed these, not all the babies are going to have the hyphen. So depending on the, on the genetics of the fish, but a good portion of them do. And they are robust and hardy, big bodied fish. So again, these were bred from the late developing males, which tend to have nice big bodies and be robust. Not the, not the skinny little scrawny little early developing males um, that you often see. We haven't listed these for sale yet. We're still uh, building our numbers up but and we got to sort them out too. We got to sort the, the short fins from the high fins and all that, but I'm really happy with the progress. This is our group of silver sailfin mollies. Not rare or anything, but really healthy and still a gorgeous fish. Full green guppies. We still have a few left. This strain comes from Scott. Uh, Scotty did a great job working this strain. I think they're beautiful. Okay, we've got a few more to show you. Um, I'm going to show you uh, some more limias and then uh, a lot of different kinds of guppies and some other stuff. So um, some wild type sword tails. Yeah, so I think it's worth sticking around. Might want to refresh that beverage, but uh, here we go. Okay, limia perugia. One of the more stunning, I think, of the limias because the males have basically mirrored sides. The, the scales on the sides are like glear. <laughs> A, a glittered mirror, mirrored glitter. I don't know how to say that exactly. And the fins get really nice black on them. So you get that contrast of the black and the tail fin is a lemon color. So all that together makes this a pretty darn good looking fish. So you get this guy dancing right here. That's worth catching on video. Look at that guy. Reminds me of a song. If you've got it, flaunt it from the producers. He's definitely flaunting it. This is our breeding colony of charcoal black guppies. We've had this strain for, geez, a couple years, at least several generations in. And they just keep going for us. Okay, here's some bluegrass guppies. I think these guys are stunning. I've showed them once or twice before and just like I did back then, I'm going to be quiet and let the fish do the talking because these are nice, mature boys and they've got all their beautiful finish. So that is what they look like when they grow up. Super stunning fish. Okay, another molly. These are yellow calico mollies. Although the truth is they aren't all yellow. Some of them have more of a white base and some of them have so much black like these on top of the yellow, that the yellow might be there, but it's a little hard to see. But no matter what you call them, they're really interesting, really neat molly. Not like what you would usually see whatsoever. 
And these are the liar tail versions, most of them. There's one or two round tails in there. The Dumbo Red Platinum Half Moon um, Guppies. I just, I just love the red contrasting with the blue on the body in those nice big uh, Dumbo eared fins with the iridescence. Look at how iridescent the top of the, the body is on those boys, the dorsal surface. In a pond or an indoor tub or something or a tank without a lid, they just absolutely glow from the top. They're one of the best fish, I think, for a tub. Okay, they've been fed, so there's gonna be a lot of dust in the water that they're stirring up as they feed, but this is Xenotoka dodroi. This is our colony of Xenotoka dodroi and uh, lots of babies in here. Okay, I promise you some really rare stuff and some sword tails. This is Zephophorus multilimiatus from Rio Tambaque. I think is how you say it. It's a, a pygmy type sword tail. They're doing well for us. You see all the little babies up there. I think we only have females, but they're gravid because they're dropping babies for us. One you never, ever, ever see. So when I see fish I've never seen, I can't help but bring them in. It's just something about me. If I was in Greek mythology, they would call that my fatal flaw. <laughs> oh, I've never seen that fish. Must order it just to see. It could be the coolest fish in the world. How would I know if I didn't order it, right? <laughs> Of all the common type platies that, you know, that are beautiful but not real expensive, this is my favorite. Neon yellow calico platies. I just think they're a burst of sunlight. I just think they are so absolutely stunning. Another fish that absolutely glows. Okay, this is my main breeding colony of Limia perugiae. There's a ton of plants in there. Like the colonies that we're really trying to breed, they're harder to see, I'm sorry but it's because we have so many plants in there to save the babies. Again, that's the secret. Lots of plants, lots of clean water, and lots of food. And you'll make so many babies. And this is our breeding colony of Zephophorus milleri. We've thinned the plants recently, so now we can actually see the fish. <laughs> Look at those big chunky females. Anyways, uh, those plants, uh, are growing in and in a couple weeks we're gonna have, look at their, their gravid, they're just about to go. So in a few weeks we're gonna have a ton more of these, these very rare Zephophorus species. Here's a fancy golden molly, just very different than your average sailfin, gold sailfin molly. It's, it's a different string completely. You have some lyre tail in there on a few of them. Really neat, really bright gorgeous fish. All these that kind of are associated with the copper strain somehow um, are ones that everyone stops at when they're walking around the fish room just because they absolutely glow under the light. Really pretty fish. Our Berlin platies in with some long fin white clouds. Obviously we just fed them <laughs> so <laughs> it's easy to tell when you feed live bears because they form a big group. Looking for the food. Yellow King Tiger Cobra Guppies. I just think they're amazing. I don't think there's anything quite like this. It looks almost like a bumblebee with that neat black patterning on the body. And then you get the cobra in there. I just, I think they're so unique. I like this fish a lot. See, I don't know if there's enough light for these to really show up, but these are the dark red calico platies. Just a lot of plants on this tank, so it's kind of hard to see them but healthy, happy, chunky, nice dark red coral platies. Oh, did I say calico? These are not, did I say calico? These aren't calico, sorry. These are just the dark red platies. They might be coral, but they're definitely not calico. Okay, here's another sword tail in there with some uh, hill stream loaches, but these guys are Zephophorus pygmaea, the pygmy sail, uh, the, the pygmy sword tail. Nice little colony, breeding well for us. So we have a, a few generations in there. And I really like these guys. I think they're fantastic. Now, something to be aware of is they do not get a sword tail. What, a sword tail without a sword? Yep, that's common names for you. They are Zephophorus, they are a sword tail. They just don't actually have a sword. But they're neat, they're itty bitty, they're very rare. 
not something you really ever see. And the colony's doing fantastic. I found them to be hardy and quite prolific for their size. Okay, just a couple more. We're almost there. Here are some koi snake skins. Kind of like a tuxedo koi, I guess, but with the, the snake skin pattern on the body. Here's another koi variety. These are the blonde koi guppies. Again, kind of a, a tuxedo type, but much lighter colored, much brighter colored. Up here we have our pineapple sword tails. I know, nothing super rare about a pineapple sword tail, but they're still gorgeous. And they don't break the bank, so that's nice. Get all that color and personality and that neat sword shape, you know, for, I don't know, $5.99, $6.99. Okay, I've got one more to show you. Here it is. Here is the newest strain of guppy for me. These are the red glass tail guppies. They do have an extended dorsal fin. They have a short tail fin. And the back bit of their body and their tail is totally clear. It looks like it's missing. So you get this red fish with this really tall sail fin dorsal. And then it looks like it looks like it's missing the back, the back chunk. It's, I think it's a really neat, interesting look myself. Don't worry, it's not missing, it's there. It's just crystal clear, it's glass. You can see right through it. I think these are phenomenal. I, I love this fish. I just think it's the neatest thing I've seen in a long time for guppy strains. Just very unique, very different. So that is most of the live bears we have available here at Dan's Fish. There's a couple tanks that I probably accidentally skipped. And we do have some more coming up later when they're out of quarantine. We have some Zephophorus signum, I think is the species name. Uh, that's a new species of swordtail, wild type swordtail that I had never seen before. And some other neat stuff coming up. If you want to learn more about aquarium fish, we do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 o'clock Eastern time here at the Dance Fish channel. Come join us. You can ask any questions about keeping fish and just kind of discuss the wonder that is aquarium fish keeping. I, I love it. We all have to be weird about something, right? For some reason, I'm weird about fish. I don't know why, but I am. And I hope you're weird about something too. If not, what are you living for, really? And I wouldn't feel right signing off without first thanking our customers and the members of this channel for their support. Thank you very much. Till next time, have a good one and bye-bye.